In the previous video we discussed these operators and they were arithmetic assignment string and comparison operators. Let's now move on to the error control operator and that is the add sign right here. What error control operator does is that if you add this to an expression it will simply suppress any errors from that expression. And the errors that it suppresses mainly depends on how you have your error handling configured in PHP. So for example, if I have x equals file foo.txt, and don't worry about the file function here, it basically just reads the file. But in this case, this file does not exist. So if we refresh the page, we get warning that file does not exist. Now, if you wanted to suppress this error, you could add the add sign right in the front. And then if you refresh the page, the error is gone. I do not recommend using this operator at all, unless you have a really, really good use case for it. In some cases, maybe you want to suppress some API calls or something, but I I still don't recommend using this operator. I just wanted to show this operator to you and show you how it works in case you come across it in some other code base. But I personally would not use at sign because it simply silences your application. It does not solve any issues. It does not fix your problems. And you might not even be aware that your application has these errors because you were suppressing it. So in short, just don't use this operator. Try to build a better error handling around your application. And we'll cover error handling in more detail in separate video. So let's move on to the increment and decrement operators. You could use incrementing operator to increment values by one or use decrementing operator to decrement value by one. There are two types of increment and decrement operators and these are pre and post increment and decrement. So for example, you could have x equals to five and then you could do post increment like this and then you could do post decrement like this. You could do pre increment like this and then pre decrement like this. So the post decrement here, what it does is that first it returns the value and then does the increment. Same for for the post increment, it first returns the value and then decrements it. In case of a pre increment and pre decrement, it first increments and decrements and then returns the value. So, to put this in practice, let's do echo x plus plus and we get five. And the reason for that is because it first returns the value and then does the increment. If we did echo x right after, we'll get six. However, if we did the pre increment, then we will get six right away. So, if we refresh, we get six and then six right after as well. The same applies to the decrement operation. A quick note here that the increment and decrement operators only affect numbers and strings. Arrays, booleans, resources, and objects are not affected. So for example, if we had x equal to true and we did plus plus x, we refresh, we get one. So it's not going to increment true to something else. Decrementing a null value has no effect, but incrementing null will result in one. So for example, if we did null and then plus plus x, will get one. If we did decrementing, it has no effect on it, so it's just gonna return nothing. Decrementing also has no effect on the string values, but incrementing has effect on the string values. So for example, if we had ABC here and we did decrement, it will have no effect on it. But if we did increment, it's just going to increment the characters. So if we refresh, we get ABD instead of ABC. So now let's move on to the logical operators. The logical operators basically allow you to combine multiple conditions together. So you could use these operators to basically combine and create a larger conditional statement. Let's go over them one by one. The first one we have an end operator and it evaluates to true only if the both operands evaluate to true. So for example if we had x equals to true and then y equals to false and then we did bar dump x and y this will only get evaluate to true if both x and y evaluates to true. In this case y evaluates to false and therefore this operation here will evaluate to false. If we refresh the page we get false. If we change y to true, now we'll get true. Just to note here, x and y don't need to be Boolean values. It could be integer or any other data type. As you know, PHP does the type conversion for you. So we could set this to one and we could set this to one as well. And this will return true as well. We could set this to zero and then it will be false. The next operator is or, and it evaluates to true if either x or y evaluates to true. So if we change this to or, this operation will evaluate to true now because x evaluates to true. And if we change change it around and we do it this way. This will evaluate to true again, but if we change this to false, now it will evaluate to false. The third one is a unary operator and it's just a negation. So if you did not x or y, what it will do is that it will negate whatever the value of x is. So in this case, x evaluates to false because it's zero and then the negation will make it true. And because this expression here evaluates to true, the entire expression will evaluate to true because we're using the or operator. So if we refresh the page, we get true. PHP also has a second variation of these operators and these are the keywords and 
end or Enzor. Even though this end and this end do the same thing logically, they're actually different in PHP and the difference is in their precedence. And we're going to cover precedence in a separate video because it is a very important topic. Let me show you an example. So if we have X equals to true and then Y equals to false, and then we set Z equals to X and Y, and then we var dump Z, we get false. And that's expected, right? Because one of them is false. However, if you use the keyword end, you would expect the result would be false also. But if you refresh the page, we get true. And the reason for that is because of the precedence. The assignment operator has higher precedence than the end operator here. And therefore this gets evaluated first. And then this gets evaluated after and it just gets discarded. So this is why you should be careful if you decide to use these keywords. PHP does something called short circuiting when it comes to logical operators. Let's say that we have X equals to true and Y equals to false. And then we did X or Y, we would get true. But the Y expression here actually never gets evaluated because it is short circuited. For logical or operator to evaluate to true, only one of the operands need to evaluate to true. And in this case, the first operand gets evaluated to true and therefore rest of the operands don't need to evaluate. And PHP short circuits them and does not evaluate it. So the final answer is true without ever executing Y. To show you this in a better example, I'm just going to create a quick function here and don't worry about functions. We're going to cover functions in a separate video. Just bear with me here. Let's say that we had a function called hello and all it did was it echoed out hello world and returned false. If we used hello in here, you would think that hello world would get printed on screen. And if we refresh the page, it does not. And that's because hello will actually never run. If we change this to end operator and we refresh the page, we see the hello world and false as the value. Because for logical end operator to evaluate to true, both of the operands need to evaluate to true. And because the first operand evaluates to true, it needs to check the other operands as well. If we changed x equal to false, now again, PHP will short circuit this and hello will never run because x evaluates to false and logical end operator does not need to check any of the other operands because the whole expression already evaluates to false. If we refresh, we get false. What if you did something like or true? Would hello get executed in this case? And the answer is no. If we refresh the page, we get the value true, which means that it actually evaluates this section here, but hello still never gets executed. And the reason for that is operator precedence and associativity. And we'll talk about that in the next video in more detail. But basically what happens here is that end operator has higher precedence than the or operator. And therefore this is grouped together and gets executed first. So the value of this expression is false. And because this returns false, the or operator needs to check the other operands and therefore the true gets evaluated. And the final result of the expression is true. All right, let's talk about the bitwise operators. Bitwise operators are used to perform bit level operations. Think of bits as on off switches. It's binary, right? So it's just zeros and ones. You could use the following operators to flip those switches. You can flip zero to one and one to zero or shift the bits left and right to get the desired result. The first operator is the end operator and it will return bits that are set in both X and Y. So for example, if we have X equals to six and Y equals to three, and then we did var dump X, Y, and we refresh, we're getting two. And let's analyze what we're getting to. So the binary representation of the number six is one, one, zero. And the binary representation of three is zero, one, one. So we're doing end operation here. End operation basically returns one if both of them are one. And then if we do this calculation manually, we see that one and zero returns zero, one and one returns one, and zero and one returns zero. And this right here equals to two. And that's what we're getting to right here. The other operator, which is or will return bits that are set in either X or Y. So if we change this to or and we change this to or, let's see what we're gonna get. So one or zero will return one, one or one will return one, and zero or one will return one. And this in decimal will be one plus two plus four, and that's seven. So if we refresh the page, we get seven. Let's move on to the third operator, which is a ZOR operator. So let's change this to ZOR. And the ZOR is just an exclusive OR operation, which will basically return bits that are set in either X or Y, but that are not set in both. So for example, in this case, one ZOR zero will return one, one ZOR one will return zero because it's set in both. And then this will return one as well. And the final answer will be one plus zero plus four, five. And if we change this to ZOR as well and refresh the page, we get five. The next one is a negation operator. A negation operator 
operator just flips the bits so if we did not x and y what's going to happen is that we're going to flip the bits of six which is going to return zero zero one then we're going to do the end operation and this will return zero zero one as well because one and one is one and everything else will be zero and the final answer will be one so if we refresh the page we get one and then we have these operators here this one basically shifts bits to the left and this one shifts bits to the right and what i mean by shifting bits is that every time a bit is shifted it will basically either multiply by two or divide by two when you're shifting bits to the left you're multiplying it by two but when you're shifting bits to the right every shift will divide it by two so let me show you an example so we have six and three let's say that we wanted to shift six by three we would do x shift y and let's do this manually so we're doing this operation here and let's delete this so we're going to shift three times and what that means is that we're just going to append zeros here so we're going to have one one zero and then zero 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 because we're shifting three times and now because we shifted it three times we're multiplying it by two each time so we have one two four eight sixteen sixteen plus thirty two and the final answer will be forty eight and we would get forty eight if we actually multiplied six by two three times if we refresh the page we get forty eight if we shift it the other way instead of appending zeros we're basically discarding the bits so we're going to discard this this and this and we're basically left with zero so if we refresh we get zero let's shift by a smaller number so let's shift by one for example i have a typo in here this should be just two and let's do six shifted by one so we're going to get one one zero and then we're just going to discard the last one and we're left with one plus two so final answer will be three and you could do that calculation by simply dividing six by two and that also is three so if we refresh the page we get three just a quick note about the bitwise operators is that both operands in this case x and y are converted to integers and then bitwise operations are applied to the integers unless both x and y are strings in which case operations will be performed on the ascii values of the characters that make up those strings so you might ask what are the use cases for bitwise operators and i'm going to tell you there are quite some use cases for them and you will see them used within php's configuration file as well in later videos but few of the use cases are for example you could use it for encryption you could use it to store some flags as bits you could even use it to store some permissions for example instead of having multiple tables where you store roles permissions and then have bunch of joins if you have small to medium application you could actually get away by storing permissions within bits let's review array operators because some operators when used with arrays behave a bit differently so let's define two variables x equals to a b and c and then y equals to d e and f if we did z equals to x plus y what's going to happen is that this plus operator will just compute union of the two arrays and the union just means that take all the elements from the variable y and append it to the variable x if they don't exist at the same index or the same key so in this case all these three elements here are at the same indexes that are these elements so when we do the union the x will actually not change it will just use the elements from the variable x so if we did var dump z we're just going to get the same a b and c let's change var dump to print r so it prints it a little better and we see a b c however if we added a couple more elements here something like g and h if we refresh now we're going to see g and h appended to the original array if we change this to be associative arrays so a equals to one b equals to two and c equals to three and let's change these around here as well when union is computed in this case the keys are unique and keys don't match so therefore everything will be appended to the variable x so if we refresh the page so now we're getting all the elements from both arrays if however one of them had the same key then it's not going to overwrite the one that's in variable x it's just going to use the value from the variable x so if we refresh the value for the key a is one and not four the next one is comparison and strict comparison operators and the way comparison happens with arrays is that it will return true if both x and y have the same key value pairs so for example in this case if we did x equal y the z will be false because the two arrays don't have the same key value pairs even if they have the same number of elements it will still be false because keys don't match even if we have the keys matching but the values are different it will still be false it will only be true if the both array keys and values match so if we change this to one two and three then it will be true even if we change one of them to a 
string and we did the loose comparison, then it will still be true because we're doing the loose comparison. However, if we do the strict comparison, this will also check the data types of the values. So in this case, this will return false because the data types don't match. So basically strict comparison will return true only if the key value pair are the same as well as their data types and also they're in the same order. So if we replace the order here and we move the B to B on the other side and we change this to be the same data type with a strict comparison this will return false but if we did the loose comparison this will return true even though they're out of order and the same logic applies to the inequality check and the strict inequality check and this operator here is just an alternative operator to check inequality so the next one we have execution operators type operators and null safe operator so don't worry about these three operators for now the type and null safe operators will be covered towards the second section of this course once we get to the classes and objects because it doesn't make sense to cover it now when we haven't covered the objects yet. The execution operator is probably something you will never use. It allows you to execute the content of backticks as shell commands, only if the shell exec is enabled. So don't worry about this either because you probably won't need it unless you need to execute some shell commands from PHP. So this is it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. In the next video, we're going to talk about a very important topic, which is about the operator precedence.